Hello, Angus. Hello. Hey, Antranic. Hi. You're gonna put down your cell phone so we can do this video. <laughs> Telemolesh. <laughs> that is cell phone, mobile phones. Has won Portugal's Festival da Canção. Conan Osiris, Conan for the Japanime manga character, Osiris for the Egyptian god. He will sing at Eurovision. Should we talk about it? Let's, <laughs> Let's do, do this. this. Guys, this is impossible to define. We've had reaction videos on this on Wooey Blogs. And yet, there is a cohesion. Oh, There's fusion here. There is Zook, Dancehall, Fado. And there's a great instrumental. Oh my god, I like this. We were spewing out so many adjectives because this requires a lot of words to describe. He is so committed to his performance. It is at once indigenous, tribal, native, otherworldly, but then also so now, futuristic, 2046, you don't know where to put your head exactly. He is so, so committed. The dancing, the singing, singing about mobile phones. Essentially, I think what I'm taking away from it is put down your phone. Your phone is ruining us. We need to live our lives. Um, the lyrics go something like, if I break the phone, I only give birth to what is mine. To see if the longing dies, go on, return. Who dies? Am I? And who kills? Who kills? I don't even know. I left mobile phones, but I never leave my own. I know that longing is dead. This sounds very modern poetry, but any case, and Tranig, what do you think? Yeah, well, Osiris is the Egyptian god of the underworld, and that's exactly where Conan Osiris is taking me. This has a very dark dark edge to it and I don't mean that in a negative way at all because something about the song hearing it in the studio cut was very emotive for me and then seeing it on stage was just very stirring it certainly wells up a lot of different emotions watching this being performed it's unlike anything I've really ever heard it's very very much unique and I'm absolutely loving what Conan Osiris is presenting on stage. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very, it's in that camp of entries this year that are a little bit divisive. It's funny, when the Songs for Festival de Cancel came out, I played it to my Brazilian colleague, and he was like, these lyrics don't make any sense, I don't know what's going on. Um, this way. And I think, you know, this is kind of borderline performance art. It's a very artistic kind of avant-garde performance. Um, I think my difficulty accessing it is I struggle with the narrative. There's obviously a language barrier, but I think um, the stage show itself, it's not necessarily kind of clearly coming across what's going on. And the trouble is if you watch it in isolation without the context around the song, the lyrics, it can seem a little bit disjointed. There's the ballet dancer, he does a death drop, he has a golden beard, there's lots of roses across the backdrop. Um, and there's not a huge amount of context around that that sort of explains what's going on. However, I will say I really did not like the song at first and have started to move in the right direction on it. I think there's lots of nice ethnic elements. Um, you can feel fado in there, but also it's quite modern and forward looking. Um, so it is strong. I think the difficulty for me is in the performance is progression. I don't have a lot of sense of what is going on or where it's going. And it feels with kind of the gold beard, there's the dancing, the repeated gold wear, something like, um, take Italy's song, for example, there's like a progression in it and the element you feel it building and it has those ethnic elements, but you kind of get what's going on. Um, Portugal, I think it's a little bit harder to access and get into. And I think that is one of those things where it will be more divisive on the night. Like I believe he carried both the televote and the jewelry in Portugal, um, but I mean, as did Claudia Pascal last year. Um, it's nice that they've gone different. It's nice that it's modern and it's not the same for the say Portuguese ballad. I just would have some concerns about, you know, how much this is kind of aesthetic versus substance people will engage with on the night. I think that's the risk here. There's definitely something unsettling about this performance. The chiming almost sounds like 
ancient mourning, like funereal rites. Um, yeah, there's a sadness to it, and I guess he's making a statement on our addiction to social media and technology, perhaps. At the end of the song, he says, I know that longing is dead. Who sent the arrow? It was me. Um, you know, are our cell phones killing us? Maybe that's one of the messages, I don't know. I just know that the unsettling element, the fact that you are lost, like Angus just said, will make it stand out. Because most songs at Eurovision tend to follow a predictable formula. Got you two minutes, you know, about 30 seconds later you have your bridge, and then you have the repeat of the chorus, and you, you know, the woman's dead. Ah! Whereas this, I, you know, it's sinewy. It's sinewy. Miss Venezuela a few years ago in the final question at Miss Universe, she said, she was asked, what's the difference between men and women? Her answer, men think the quickest way from A to B is to go in a straight line. But she said, women know you gotta go through the curves. And I feel like Conan Osiris is taking us through the curves. He is genderless, <laughs> by the way. Because you can't even define that. There's androgyny. There's, you know, pansexuality. It's, I like the fact that it's two men performing something that could be called sensual, actually. There's something very sensual in the way that dancer moves. And so, yeah, you know, Eurovision's never just been about the song. Eurovision is a TV spectacle. Otherwise, we would just air the contest on the radio. So I'm saying amen to all the madness, amen to all the crazy. I think, I don't think this is a middling song. It's either shooting to the top or shooting to the bottom. And that's fine, because a country like Portugal has to take a risk. We know this. When they play it safe, they don't win. They don't do well. They don't make the final. But when they go out there and showcase whatever it is the artist is feeling, they can slay. Absolutely. It is, as you said, very unsettling. I, when I listen to the song or watch the performance, I do feel a sense of, um, I feel quite uncomfortable with some of the things that are going on. And once again, that's not a negative comment about the song. It just is the atmosphere that he creates. And it is something that is very hard to replicate and he manages to take that from the song and do the same thing on stage which i thought was quite exceptional i do have to agree with what angus said about the performance so some of the things there are i don't know what's going on why is, what's happening with the dancer behind him what's the gold beard all about uh, it's not like kate miller heidke was saying why is there a dementor in the background we know why there's a dementor in the background it's her demons I don't know what's going on with some of the staging in Portugal, but having said that, this is just the national final performance. The staging come Eurovision could be completely different and they could uh, have that message coming across in a much more accessible manner to the masses, even though the song will be in Portuguese and the majority of the viewers won't understand what he's saying. Mm. What I will say for the emotional mood um, is although like I may not be sold on yet, it does also in some ways, I know she's not really, she's kind of um, <laughs> persona non grata in the Eurovision community at the moment, but Jamala 1944, I do feel some kind of sonic similarities here and it's that kind of like dark ethnic mood that that in exactly the same way from the opening note, you felt a little bit otherworldly and some discomfort coming in, but then it ended up being amazing going on to win. So yeah, I think it's totally right to say this will either be top five or not make it out of the semifinals. Um, I'm not yet sold on it. However, uh, that does not mean that it might wow everyone else. Like, I can appreciate the artisticness of it. I just wonder if we need some context for the high art so that people get what's going on with it. Final point for me, I view Conan as some kind of Portuguese witch doctor. Let's call him a pitch, a Portuguese witch, because it is so bewitching and gets under your skin and you don't know why. You don't know why you're watching this, why you can't take your eyes away, but you know that you are here for it. I'm going to conclude with a comment from Zoe on the WeWe Blogs website. She says, it's an absolutely bewitching and addictive song. It seems like this gets into your body and your soul and you don't know why. That is the magic in the song. First you listen to like, what the fuck? Then you listen twice and you don't know anymore and so you start to like it. The mixture of sounds, the madness of this guy, whoa. This is the kind of music that fulfills its purpose. That is to say it enters and will never get out of your head. Please give a chance to this crazy man because this is so good. Yeah, it really is so good. That comment just sums it all up very perfectly. Conan does a lot in terms of uh, conveying what he's feeling through the music. And I think that's something that is very typical of Port Portuguese entries in the past. But this isn't run of the mill. This is very, very much its own song. And 
personally, I'm someone who doesn't like sourdough rolls. This is my favorite Portuguese entry ever, and nothing really comes close for me. This is amazing, and I wish Conan all the best because I think this could very much be Portugal's second best result ever. Yeah, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we think. What do you think? Is Conan Osiris ready to hit the Eurovision stage? Can he do well? Does this get stuck under your skin or do you turn it off, honey? Let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. Make sure to pick up your smartphones, even if Conan Osiris disagrees, and give us a like on the video. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel, comment so we know what you think, and then you can follow us on all of our social media channels at Wee Wee Blogs. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.